Hey everybody, so in just over a week from now, we'll all be meeting in Longyearbyen to kick off our Svalbard Arctic Expedition. Now, in order to help you prepare, I asked for some questions that I'm going to be answering for you in this video. But before I get to those, I've got five different sections that I just want to talk through to help you prepare for this experience. The first one is the itinerary and kind of just getting to Longyearbyen. Then from there, getting from your hotel to the ship and the cabins. The next one is the day-to-day. -day. What to expect on a day-to-day -day basis. The next one, Zodiac excursions and what to expect. And then the last one, a packing list, both clothing-wise and photographically. And then after that, we'll get to the questions. So let's get right into it. Okay, the first one. Arriving in Longyearbyen is quite an experience in itself. What I would advise is when you check in for your flight from Norway, from Oslo, going through Tromsø normally, into Longyearbyen, book a window seat. I normally prefer aisles, but sitting on the window, the views coming in over Svalbard is absolutely magnificent. If you have your phone with you, videos or photos through the window, definitely worth it. Now, when you arrive on the ground, you'll walk in and you do your passport clearing and stuff in Tromsø or in Oslo, depending just on how the flights work out. You walk out to the luggage collection area, which is basically in the terminal. As you walk out, there's a big stuffed polar bear around the carousel. Grab your bags. From there, straight, walk out. There's only one door. It's not very big. You walk out, and there's a whole bunch of taxis there. Some of the hotels have transfers. Otherwise, it's as simple as getting a taxi from the airport and just giving them the name of your hotel, and they can take you straight there. It's literally all of a five to eight minute drive. You can pay for the taxi with a credit card, or if you have Norwegian Krona, that's also acceptable. I'll be arriving in Longyearbyen on the SAS, Scandinavian Airline Flights, on the 17th of May at 2 p.m. So for any of you that's on the flight there, we'll find each other and we'll arrive together and we can arrange a big taxi just to get us to a hotel. There are shuttle buses as well that run from there and they do a big loop through the town and drop at all the hotels. I found, and it's not very expensive, I found it's easier just to grab a taxi, Svalbard taxi, original name, black vehicles, easiest one. Just grab it and then off you go. They, at, when you get to your hotel, the, everything's been pre-booked. You can just check in from there, settle in, and then if you are arriving on the 17th, or some of you might be arriving earlier, head out and explore the town. But I'll share, uh, share a bit more about this in one of the up upcoming sections. Right, moving on. Okay, right. So on the 18th, that's the day that we board the MS Stockholm. I'll make a point to get in touch with you, either at the airport if I'm arriving on the same flight, or then on the 18th. And with us getting onto the boat at four o'clock, I will be arranging a transfer on the ground to collect everybody from the two hotels that we'll be staying in and to take us to the Stockholm. So I'll touch base with all of you, and not, not only next week, but in Svalbard as well, on the 18th. But for now, if you can be ready at three o'clock at your hotel on the 18th, I will then arrange the transfer vehicle that's going to take us to the Stockholm. On the last day, we get off the boat. So on the last day, we have breakfast on the boat while it's docked at the, uh, at the docks. And then we get off at about 9 o'clock. I will again be arranging the transfer vehicle from there to our hotels. So those two transfers I will take care of on the ground. It's the only thing you have to worry about then is getting from the airport, if you're not with me on a flight just to kind of work together, taxi, straight to the uh, hotels. Again, super close, super quick and easy. Now... On the 18th, I would highly recommend you go out and explore the little town of Longyearbyen. There's basically one, you can argue, two streets to look through, and it's worth it. Take your camera with you. There's normally reindeer in the town, polar bears sometimes. I haven't seen them yet, more in winter. But you also have the famous sign, uh, polar bear sign, which you can go and take pictures of. There's a glacier. There's loads of activities. And I can also highly recommend the Svalbard Museum, which is if you're looking at the water, Walk straight down next to the Radisson, and you'll find the Svalbard Museum there. It would be a good idea to check that out before the trip, because on the trip as well, we'll be doing some lectures, and the context you'll get from the museum, definitely worth it. Right, let's move on. Okay, let's go to the day-by-day -day stuff. The boat runs on three things. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because the sun doesn't set, those are the three things that kind of keeps time for us. Eight o'clock in the morning is breakfast. 
One o'clock is lunch, seven o'clock is dinner. This is stock standard every single day. We've had to change it once or twice, which is very easy because we take exclusive use of the boat when there's a cool sighting or we're out in a zodiac to go and look at something cool. But generally, we try and stick to that. So eight o'clock in the morning is breakfast. We normally then after breakfast, we'll have some kind of excursion, either a zodiac cruise, which is we go to the fjords and we stay on the zodiac, or we'll use the zodiacs to transfer to land and then go for a walk from there. Back on the boat, one o'clock is, is lunch. Some afternoons we do another excursion, depending on where on the, on the archipelago we are, or we then shoot and, and scan from the, from, the, uh, from the boat. Seven o'clock is dinner, and then from there on, dinner's normally finished about 8, 8.30. Majority of the time, we head up to the lounge, which is on the top level of the boat, and we can sit there. There's drinks, we chat, uh, there's Lightroom always going, and then you kind of go to uh, bed when you feel the time is right. Don't worry about going to bed early, if that's your thing. Whenever there's a big sighting, blue whales, walrus, a big walrus haul out, polar bears, someone is always up on the bridge, either the captain or the first mate. And we will always make sure to go around and check all the cabins and knock to make sure you won't miss anything. That said, the light, the soft light at about 1, 1 30 in the morning is absolutely beautiful. It's not quite golden because the sun is quite high, but there's a soft quality to it which is absolutely amazing. Now, the biggest thing to, to keep in mind here, this is an expedition. It's the same as Iceland, Borneo, those kind of things. It's not like a safari where the game drives are timed. Now you start, now you stop. Anything can happen at any time because we're in, in the wildest place you'll probably ever be in your life. It is phenomenal. So at breakfast, Christian or Bo, who are our two local guides, will do a presentation at the dining table with where we sail through the night. There's a big map, and they keep track of it. So at the end of it, you can take a picture of the entire thing, of where we sailed, and they'll also give us a digital version. But in the mornings, they'll say, okay, cool, we've just arrived at Hinlopen Strait. This is what the plan is, and we'll go from there. At lunch and dinner, we do recaps. The environment is, it, it can be quite hostile with ice conditions changing. Not for us, from a change point of view. So we update you at every single meal time what's going to happen. Some mornings we'll have an expedition, others not. Some afternoons we'll have an expedition, others not. Sometimes after dinner we'll head out and do a bit of an uh, excursion. These will be communicated to you in real time. Myself, Christian, and Bo will be updating you as we go. Now, in the mix with all of this, myself, Christian, and Bo will also be doing presentations in the lounge. Photographic, history, natural history, polar bears, so you're going to leave, even ice, there's an ice lecture, which is, sounds better than it is. No, it is better than it sounds. There we go. So you're going to leave with a lot of knowledge. And that's kind of all the elements that make up a day. Now, what you're going to do as well when you get on board is in the lounge, you're going to find yourself a spot and you can set up your camera equipment and your laptop there. That's it. It's just out on the boat. It's 100% safe. And in between, I'll be going around helping with Lightroom or Photoshop but you'll get the hang of us very quickly. After we settle in on day one, you'll get an idea of how it runs. Um, again, the biggest thing I need to emphasize, it is an expedition and things do and probably will change, but we will keep you posted in real time. Right, moving on. Okay, so Zodiac excursions. This is a fun part of this whole episode because we've got two big Zodiacs. So there's six of us uh, on each one. Bo takes one, Christian takes one, and then off we go. On the first Zodiac excursion, we're going to do a full safety briefing. What to do, what not to do, how to sit, how to get on, how to get off, how to grip, all of those things. It's not difficult, but safety, very important. Sometimes, we'll just go for a cruise around. So then you'll be shooting from the Zodiac, right? Other times, we'll use the Zodiac just to get to land. And in those instances as well, the first time, we'll do a full briefing how to get into the boat, out of the boat, all I can ask here is please just listen to Christian Bow and myself on safety. Swing there, sit here, do that. Phenomenal experience. The Zodiac Cruises is probably the coldest you're going to be on this trip. There's wind going, we're on the open water, inside the fjords, there's ice everywhere. So make sure to keep that in mind when we get dressed for these cruises. But I'll get to that when we speak about uh, clothing. Right, let's move on. Okay, so here we go. Clothing. 
There's, I'm going to do this in a three by three. There are three situations that you need to pack for and to be able to dress for. And there's three types of footwear that you would be needing. So let's start there. That's the easiest. Number one is the waterproof boots. Now, most of you, if not all of you, have given Candice your shoe size and we will be renting those for you in Long Eben. There's a couple of places, but we're working with Fabian who's going to help us out. The cost for that for the whole week is 550 Norwegian kroner. And you can pay that directly when we collect your boots. And then on the last day, again, I'll arrange to get them taken back. Easiest way to do it. Those you will only wear when we go on the Zodiac and on excursions. There's a spot. As we walk into the Stockholm, there's a, a, a rack for all the heavy jackets and for your life jacket, which you'll get on day one, and also for all the boots, all the wet stuff. So whenever you get back on the boat, your big boots come off, you leave them there. Your big jacket, like your Gore-Tex jacket comes off, you can hang it over there, and you leave your life jacket with it. Whenever we then head out, not onto the deck, onto the Zodiacs, then you can put on all the heavy stuff. So number one is the boots. Number two, comfortable hiking shoes. You can also use sneakers. I prefer hiking boots. Just sometimes on a clear landing or in Long Eben, it is still wet and muddy and stuff. Hiking boots work really well. The third one, and this is a big one, is slippers. I kid you not. I'll actually include a link to a blog I did as well. On the boat, it's comfortable. Normally, I walk around with my socks. Most people do. And then when you just want to step out on the deck, you can slip into your slippers. Make sure they've got a grip underneath that you can buy them in long as well. Beautiful stuff. And that they're warm. Some people have also used, used sneakers that slip on easy. That you'll use either in the boat or sometimes we'll be sitting at a meal or we'll be sitting in the lounge doing our thing and then someone will, they'll spot a blue whale or there'll be a polar bear far off. We might not get in the Zodiac, but we will then put your sneakers on or your slippers and just rush outside quickly. I've gone outside with t-shirts for like five to 10 minutes just to photograph a blue whale and then we come in back in. Okay, so waterproof boots, we've got you sorted. Hiking boots, highly recommended. And then either slippers or comfortable shoes that you can slip on and off. Now, the clothing. The three situations that you need to pack for for this entire trip. On the boat, inside. On the boat, outside and Zodiac excursions. Let's start on the boat, because they scale up. On the boat, anything like a denim or tracksuit pants, very comfortable, because inside the boat, it, it's very, very, how do I say, comfortable temperature. So inside the boat, you either wear your denims or your, or your tracksuit pants, um, something like this, a jersey, a fleece, layers, long t-shirt, whatever the case is. Now, when you then want to go out on the deck, that's when you can start scaling it up. A fleece, a nice fleece hoodie. Again, the shopping in Long Eben for clothing, amazing. A fleece hoodie and maybe even then a waterproof pair of pants if it's moist outside. Otherwise, a denim or a tracksuit pants, you can get outside on the deck for short areas, but you might want to just warm it up for there. I normally use uh, long johns, so thermal underwear, longs, and at the top, and I have a t-shirt over or a denim over, and that works pretty comfortably. When you go on the deck, and we will at times spend a lot of time on the deck searching for polar bears in the pack ice, it does get cold. Layers are best. Thermal, long um, t-shirt, t-shirt over, maybe a jersey or something like this, a fleece, and then you can put your big jacket on if we stay on the deck for a long time. Right. When you then go on a, on a Zodiac excursion, I would highly recommend waterproof pants of sorts. Now, you can either have your warm pants and then have, you get those rain coat, like a rain jacket pants, which you can fold up into a small ball. You can put those over. I normally use expedition pants, which you can buy in Long Eben. Some of you from international places might get that. We just don't get them in South Africa. And you can wear those for the excursions. For the excursions as well, you need a big Gore-Tex jacket that cuts the wind. Very important. On the Zodiacs, it gets cold. So one big jacket will cut it. Maybe one, one or two fleeces that you can alternate, thermals, and then jerseys and stuff like that. If you are looking into buying something unique, they have fantastic, fantastic wool jerseys um, that says Svalbard as a memento and something to use. I use mine all the time. Um, and then, of course, your underwear and your socks and so on and so forth. On socks, while we're talking about it, we will more than likely stop in a small settlement called New Alessund, which is the most northern research village in the whole of Svalbard. 
There's a small shop that opens up for like one hour a day. We normally pop in there on our way north. They sell phenomenal reindeer socks. Keep it in mind. Right. Um, other than that, it's gloves, beanies, get one, and also buffs. You get a buff that you can just pull up over your face. Scarves work as well, but I find the buffs are just a little bit more uh, easier to manage, especially on a boat when you've got things flapping around. So packing-wise, um, that is, I think, that. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to drop me a WhatsApp or an email, and I'll be happy to help out. But if you cover those three types of shoes and those three different situations, in the boat, indoors, on the boat, outdoors, and excursions, you should be more than fine. Good to go. All right, next one. The last thing I wanted to touch on before I get to your questions is the cabins. Now, when you enter the Stockholm at the top, there's the area where you put the shoes and you put your jackets and stuff, the wet clothing. That goes into the lounge where we spend the majority of our time, like almost all the time. From there, there's a stairs going up into the bridge. The Stockholm has an open bridge policy, so you are encouraged to go up there and have a look. It's the best place to scan from indoors, so make sure you bring your binoculars. It's a big deal. From the lounge, there's stairs going down. Downstairs, there's the dining area and the cabins. Now, the dining area is in the middle, and all of our six cabins are scattered around, right? Each of them, bunk beds, packing space underneath, cupboard, and then a, an ensuite bathroom as well. Shower, toilet, and basin. It's a wet bathroom, so the shower, you can open everything. Comfortable, more than you need. The thing is, we don't spend too much time in the cabins. We're up a lot. There's a lot of sun. There's a lot of good stuff to see and photograph. So most people stay up in the lounge. I've actually had people who sleep in the lounge. They just pull up a blanket and sleep in the conversation until we wake up again. You'll get the idea. So cabin-wise, super comfortable. Everything is downstairs. And again, you don't spend too much time there, but it's more than what you need. Okay, photographic equipment next. Okay, photographic equipment. Two camera bodies, highly recommended. I would also recommend you get more batteries because in the cold, the batteries can run down pretty quickly. At the station inside the lounge, I would leave your charges out in a spot and just keep on rotating them all the time. Lenses, I would recommend everything from a wide angle, right? 14 mil might be a little too wide, but you can get some good stuff. I would recommend 24 up to as high as you can go. 600 mil, even if you have converters. We have had polar bears right next to the boat where you're looking down on them, where they're on the ice. A lot of the time, they're a little bit further away. So 400 to a 600 mil, highly recommended, plus converters. Now, phones, iPhones, Samsungs, whatever you use, make sure to take them and make sure to shoot video on them a lot. It's an amazing experience, and the videography from the back of the boat as you're sailing through the ice, from the front, you can get a chance to go up into the crow's nest and to shoot from the top. Video on the phone, or if you have like a small Osmo or something like that, very, very handy. I have had a few questions about drones. So the official is this. Svalbard as an entire island does not allow drones, but some operators do. So it is a bit of a gray area. The only thing I can leave you with is this. If you have a drone that you want to take and it's easy to pack and take along, take it with because the day before and the day after we are uh, in Longyearbyen, before and after the cruise, it is worth taking your drone just to go there. You can hike up to the glacier, put your drone up, you can get incredible stuff. On the boat, it would depend on a couple of things. It depends who the captain is, where we are, and so on. We've only had one or two instances that I can recall that we were allowed to put a drone up when we were on the cruise. There's reasons for it, and the guys will explain that to you when we get there as well. But if you want to take a drone, the footage and video you can get in Longyearbyen and around Longyearbyen, absolutely incredible. So with all of that said, let me move on to some of your questions. Okay, questions. I'm going to fire these off as they go. Number one, presume there's Wi-Fi on board. That's a negative. We are in the middle of nowhere at any given time. We are 1,000 of the northernmost people on the planet. Okay, 
Uh, I have got emergency contact information for the boat. They've got a sat phone. I'll be sharing that with you guys next week on email. I will also have a wild eye sat phone where I will share the number with you. I will check that once a day, maybe once every second day. And if you need to, you can then use that as well. Right. Do we do much walking? We don't do a huge amount, but every single day we do um, go onto land. It's not kilometers and kilometers, but the walking is where the fun is. You can get very close. I'm talking very close to Svalbard, uh, to Svalbard reindeer. There's walrus. Um, we're not allowed to walk to polar bears if we know they are there. But yes, we do try and do a few excursions. And being out in that place on foot, absolutely amazing. Uh, for gratuities, the suggestion you gave us is in the general, uh, is it general or per person? So the recommended that we have is between $300 and $350 per person, which I then gather at the end of the day, and I hand that over to the ship's staff. So it's not a per person thing of staff, it's global. One number, we pull that, and I hand it as we get off the boat to the captain, and he shares it out equally. Um, I've got you booked boots for us. What is the rental cost? I mentioned earlier the cost for the boots is 550 Norwegian krona uh, for the entire period. Uh, changing money in krona. Do I need to, or can I pay with euro, dollars, or credit card? Credit card works everywhere. Uh, they do accept dollars in the majority of the stores in Longyearbyen. If you want to change Krona, you can do that at the Oslo airport. But I normally have some dollars with me, and then I go the route of credit card. Seems to be the easiest. Uh, also, what about a trip for a tip for our Zodiac guides and team? Can I give them dollars? So like I said earlier on, we pull this, and all of that goes to the staff that gets shared. If, like on an African safari, you feel you want to give someone a bit extra, you're more than welcome. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, do we have to pack or bring travel bottles for filling them up? Or do they have water bottles for us on the boat? I would recommend you bring your own one. Or you can buy one that says Svalbard or Long Even on it. And then you can just manage that from there. They don't give those away or they don't have them for use as such on the boat. So definitely bring your own one if you want to keep hydrated. And remember, theoretically we're going to a desert, right? You'll see. It's very dry, air-wise, so drinking and staying hydrated, vital. When we're on the Zodiacs, are we carrying a whole camera bag or stuff with us, or only cameras and small things? So this will depend. If you want to take your whole bag and it's easy, absolutely. You can put it at your feet, open it, and shoot from there. I would warn against not taking your big lenses when we go on the Zodiacs, because we've had puffins in the water very close. You might want your big lens. We could be sailing around on the Zodiac, and there's polar bears up on the ridge. So I normally have my travel camera bag, which I then leave on the ship, and I've got a smaller waterproof bag where I just stick the cameras in, and that goes with me. But if you can plan to take all of your gear with you on the Zodiacs, and there'll be instances where I might suggest something else on the boat, but prepare for taking everything with you when you go. Right, and that is it. Guys, so what I recommend, like I mentioned earlier on, go and watch the 2015 video day-by-day -day diary I did. It'll give you an idea of what the ship looks like, some of the insides, some of what people are wearing, and I'm sure there'll be some value in that as well. What we'll do is I will put my WhatsApp number in the email that's coming to you guys. If you have any questions in the week leading up to us traveling, please feel free to get in touch. I can't wait to get back up to Svalbard. It's been the longest I haven't been in Svalbard because of COVID since 2010. This place, it's like stepping into a movie, and I have no doubt it's going to blow your mind. It's an amazing experience. And I can't wait to see you guys up there in just over a week from now. Good luck with your packing. Good luck with the preparations. And again, please feel free to get in touch with Candice or myself for any last-minute things. I hope this helped, and I will see you up in the Arctic soon. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Have a good one. Bye for now.